Apologies for the brevity of this review, actually half of you probably end up liking the pace, so I guess I'm sorry you're welcome. So let's get this review underway. This is the Montec Metal DT24 Base. Uh, it has a couple of versions of it, but this is the base one. It's a new cooler from Montec, and they sent this one to me for review, with enough time to make the review ready for launch day I might add, which is quite unusual for me. I'm not being paid to make this video, and Montec have no control over what's said or shown in this video, but they did send this one to me for free so make of that what you will. If it's any cons consolation or consolidation, uh, it's not all glowing. Starting with the specs and claims, this is a dual tower dual fan cooler measuring in at 153mm tall which is nicely under the typical ATX case clearance of 155 to 160mm. It's supported by most consumer platforms around now, AM4, 5, LJ1700, 1200, 1150 whatevers and also supports you with a 3 year warranty. It's claiming to support CPUs with a TDP of up to 270 watts, which is kind of an arbitrary figure since TDP isn't measured but the same by all manufacturers. I'm not 100% sure it's measured the same between generations of hardware from the same manufacturer, and I'm not even sure they, Montec, understand what it really means after watching a GN video a while back. I was left puzzled by the concept of measuring a cooler's capability by CPU TDP. Uh, by the way, when I mean Montec, I mean more the marketing department than the engineering department or whoever designed the cooler. They probably understand it, but yeah, marketing gets carried away. Anyway, if it's claiming to cool a 270 watt consuming CPU, it should be more than enough for the 100 watt consuming 6700K test system, which we'll go through in a moment. It does indeed have a six heat pipe tower, much like a Noctua D style cooler. There are 104 fins split across the two towers. I'm not going to count that. I'll take their word on this one, but by all means, knock yourself out if you must. Inside the box, as promised we have the mounting hardware, fan clips and some thermal paste. It doesn't look like a lot but it should last for roughly three applications by my estimation so that's more than enough. Of course you know by the footage that it has two fans. Apparently they have maximum static pressure so I presume we're looking at relatively minimum airflow. I kid but we've got to make our own fun barring anything else being worthwhile present. It's claimed to also function quietly under 30 dBA at maximum fan speed. Which I can tell you now it practically uh, doesn't mean anything. So we're at 1.8 meters now. The noise floor of the room is 35 dBA there or thereabouts. 35.2 maybe, uh, at least measuring on this, and uh, yeah, full fan speed, no graphics card fan speed, power supply unit fan speed is imperceptibly low, uh, and it basically makes zero noise, it's less than the noise floor of the room, um, and this is your noise level. Roughly 40 dBA, we're at 1.8 meters away. So yeah, if they're testing an anechoic chamber, it means nothing to you as a, as a practical consumer. And regardless, it's still pumping out um, at nearly two meters, an extra five dBA on top of your noise floor, of this room's noise floor. And it is relatively well sound treated. Quite a lot of paneling in here. Um, so yeah, it doesn't really mean anything. Sorry about that. Yeah, along with the rest of the noise claims, we'll see how that one works out in the noise normalized testing. Very little quiet marketing speak means a lot. The sentence designed for low noise output would honestly be believable. Anything else is completely arbitrary. You know, I rather like this whole review the product via the marketing technique. It keeps things fresh and pacey. Anyway, the fans themselves are 4-pin PWM fans, so you're all set in that regard. Both fans have a pass-through cable, so you can daisy-chain them off your CPU fan motherboard header, which is nice. But don't be fooled by the word metal in, in the name of this cooler. The shiny strip around the edge of the frame, uh, that's just plastic. The bracket, fan, hub, they're all plastic too. The only parts of the metal are the ones that need to be that are inside the hub. So uh, yeah, closing out the fan-specific discussion, just on a feels in the hand point of view the blades are good quality but i think the frame feels hollow bringing down the overall quality feel 
Onto the installation, as stated, it is user friendly. I've installed my fair share of coolers in the past, and this one, in line with others, was quite intuitive. The manual is actually half decent, with good pictograms and a solid inventory of all the parts and all the specs you could want. Something I really liked was the rigidity of the connection between the tower and the assembly built onto the board during the installation, not, not after, during. After a turn or so of each of the bolts on the base plate of the tower, it was being supported rock solid so there wasn't much concern about the pace spreading poorly because the tower was leaning left or right on a loose bolt connection that wasn't fully tightened down. I did a test paste application with a conservative mm, small amount just to see how it would spread and it spread out okay. It missed the corners a bit. I'm sure it would be fine especially after applying a bit of heat to the system but just to make sure there was full coverage for testing, I applied a larger amount the second time round. Remember, there's no such thing as too much, unless it squirts out the side and gets in the eye. As for mounting the fans, they have some fan clips. Like most, they can be a little tough to apply, but it's not the end of the world. Like most things, push alert hurts or something clicks. Now, there's no stated RAM clearance specification. The towers are completely clear of the RAM slots, but there are notches in the fin stack like they might come into contact with some. The fan positions, however, aren't accounted for in any RAM clearance equation or lack thereof. The front fan here covers at least three of the four RAM slots on this board, so there's slim to no chance that you'll be avoiding this issue without any compromise of any sort. If you wanted a front fan that's in the flush top position as advertised, it would need to have RAM that's 11mm smaller than the set of roughly 40mm tall rip jaws 4 in this test system. In other words, they'd need to be no less or no more than 29mm. A kit like the Corsair Vengeance LP RAM sticks are just over 26 millimeters tall which would work well but your options are limited so if you're looking for the perfect looking system and this cooler forms part of that do your ram research thoroughly first as it stands, with this 40mm tall RAM, the front fan pokes a few millimetres over the top of the heat pipe tip, so well over the fin stack, which is technically fine. It's not the most efficient position with a slither of the edge of the fan overshooting the top of the fin stack, and more critically, not covering the bottom part of the cooler, that's the hottest part when in use, but it's also not how the whole unit is advertised with the nicely flush top position. On that note, when the center fan is resting on the base plate screw, it's almost perfectly flush with the top, which is nice. But anyway, you can always place the fan to the back of the tower if you're happy with it, although you might need some pads to act as spacers for clearance between the tower and the fan blades because they do move when they ramp up in speed, but that didn't cover this issue for me. So I've been doing some testing and I heard this noise. This is the fan that was mounted to the back of the cooler. Now, I thought it was the blade coming into contact with the uh, tower. Unfortunately, that wasn't the case. Uh, I added in these uh, sort of spacers, they're foam pads, added them to the frame to get more separation, but it actually seemed to make the problem very slightly worse, and I heard this noise more often. Turns out it must be something to do with uh, the pressure of mounting this is causing the frame to twist in a certain way and causing pressure pressing on the top, or in this orientation at least, the top and bottom of the frame, which is causing some sort of noise. I think it's something to do with the hub and the rotor, something in that ballpark um, that's, causing, that's, that's causing that noise. So yeah, it doesn't happen much in the other direction, you have to squeeze a lot harder. That was the cable touching the blades, by the way. Yeah, I can just about get it to happen, but very easy in that orientation. So I'm going to have to throw this into the front. Hopefully it doesn't create the noise. It's slightly less optimal, but yeah, we'll just have to deal with it and uh, get the tests out. It won't be that much worse than it would have been otherwise. Just, you know, maybe a couple of percent, which is not ideal, but it's what I'm dealing with. So yeah, I did end up having to use the less than optimal front position, but in all honesty, I'm humoring this cooler's dual fan design a little. I've tested dual versus single fan coolers in the past and made a whole video on it, and the performance difference isn't large in any respect. At best, 5% difference or 2.6 degrees in my testing. That's the same cooler with one or two fans, not just any single and dual fan cooler, but that would be silly. So you could just use the single 
single center fan and get very similar performance, maybe even use the second fan as a rear exhaust case fan. So there we go, now the overview is sorted, let's talk performance. So the results have just come in, uh, actually I just did finish them, and we'll start with the full speed performance and get to the tasty noise normalized results in a second. At full fan speed, the DT24 base performed well through the roughly 60% load fire strike testing. It's in line with the Side Mugen 5 Rev B, not the new Rev C, which is a monster of a cooler despite being reasonably sized. That goes for both of them. It's well ahead of the Freezer 34 Esports Duo, another dual fan cooler, but not quite as large or expensive. However, not all that's cold is quiet. Although it's as cool as the Mugen 5, it's also a lot louder at 46 dBA at 40 centimeters compared to the Mugen 5 that's running at 37.5 dBA at full speed while performing just as well. That 46 dBA is quite the jump from the 30 dBA claimed on the box. Always be skeptical of thermal and acoustic performance claims from a manufacturer. They might be right in a very specific controlled scenario, but the testing isn't standardized across the industry, so it's not worth the paper it's written on. In Pro95, a full load test is a slightly different story. The Freezer 34 handles the much higher load much better than the lower load and steps right up to the D24 base, which looking at the stats graph, the Freezer 34 runs at just over over 40 dBA, quite a lot quieter than the 46 dBA from the DT24 base. Yes, I know this graph is a mess, I'll clean it up in the future. So there's a lot of performance on the table with the DT24 at full speed while being a little noisy. Does it fare much better at lower speeds outputting the same noise level as everything else? Well to get the noise normalized target of 36.5 dBA at 40 centimeters from the front uh, at an angle of 45 degrees, the fans had to be turned down to 25% speed, roughly 1350 RPM, 1350 RPM. Hang on, 1350 RPM at 25%, so 100% would be roughly 5000 RPM. I'd like to say that, but no. Full speed is roughly 2000 RPM, the lowest speed is limited to roughly 800 RPM, which is fine, but not really suitable for low load silent systems if that's your intention. Anyway, the acoustically normalized fire strike results show strong performance from the DT24 base. Remember, all of these results were captured while all of these coolers are outputting 36.5 dBA at 40 centimeters. So yeah, this is good performance at 60% load. However, under full load Prime T5, just a joke there, it performs relatively similarly to the previous. Before I conclude everything, let's cover the cost. Performance doesn't exist in a vacuum after all. So the price of the metal DT24 base is or will be $57, 68 euros or roughly 60 pounds. The, the pounds was converted from the euro figure since I didn't get the pounds figure from Montec. For an air cooler that's in the above average range. It's not ludicrously expensive but it's certainly not a budget option. Now I was going to show this graph, the one you're seeing now, and say the beloved Mugen 5 is around 50 of the current on the board and the freezer 34 while not being as good as the DT24 base is also around 40 of the currencies on the board but the prices on these graphs haven't been updated in quite some time since I haven't reviewed a cooler in quite a while it's only been cases and procrastination and the world has changed since then so I updated the graphs and now they look like this it's quite the difference right these things are more expensive now so with that updated context if we combine the price with the performance data, price versus performance if you will, the Montec Metal DT24 base sits between two small premium coolers to one side and a budget dual tower cooler and a mid-expense high performance cooler to the other. Although bear in mind that the side Mugen 5 in this test and price data is the Rev B Mugen 5 that's no longer available, not the new Rev C version that costs $65 these days, I'd expect the performance to be similarly good, which which would likely result in very similar price versus performance to the Metal DT24. Concluding this review, from all the testing, the tower is clearly a strong design. Even with the fans spinning at 1300 RPM in the acoustically normalized testing, it's just as noisy or quiet as everything else, so the tower is a strong point. However, while the fans are fine, I think they're one of the weaker links or, or the weak link. 
Let's put it this way, I think some of the maximum static pressure capability of these fans could be converted to higher airflow rates at lower RPMs. 2000 RPM fans aren't quiet at those top speeds and you can achieve that airflow at lower speeds with a different blade profile and just, just bring the the, the, the RPM down a bit. The other side to the fans as potential weak links is you don't need two of them. I mean, the Mugen 5 is a perfect example. Removing one of them wouldn't hurt performance that much thermally, maybe a couple of degrees in certain scenarios, but would reduce the cost of the unit by maybe five or ten dollars, which makes it even more competitive with coolers like the Mugen 5. In fact, it might even be a go to option for a lot of people. So, that's my conclusion. It's a good cooler at lower speeds. It leaves something to be desired at the high speeds in the noise department, but overall it is a competitive cooler and I can recommend it if you like the look and everything you've seen in this video. So there we go. Believe it or not, I managed to make this video in about two days. I haven't edited it yet, but it, it might make it in two days. I know, it normally takes me two weeks to make a video. I don't know what happened either. Coolers are inherently easier to review than cases, but I think ditching a lot of the nuance and fluff helped a great deal. Does the video look as good? Maybe not, but the results are the most important part and those have not been compromised whatsoever, which is good. So there we go. Uh, I'm hoping that the conclusion didn't come across as a little bit sort of wishy-washy or a little bit uh, sort of because Montex sent the cooler and that sort of thing, that I'm trying to be a little bit softer uh, on the whole situation, um, or maybe on my criticis criticism or critique. But uh, I, my initial conclusion was, hey, this is more expensive than something, say, like the size Mugen 5, which is a very high-value cooler, a uh, high-performing, high-value cooler. It's not budget, but it's high-value. Um, so I was like, my default to most things are, hey, the size Mugen 5 is amazing. Uh, check that out. But uh, re after re-reviewing the prices, a lot of changes, the global economy or the, the market has, has, has evolved or devolved quite a lot over the last year. Also, it's been changing quite a lot uh, longer than that, but in the last year or so especially, things have changed quite a bit. So, yeah, revisiting the costs and the prices of everything, uh, this does actually fall into quite a competitive band with the Mugen 5, which is a, a pretty high-value cooler in itself. Uh, I do think if you were to choose this over something like the Side Mugen 5, uh, or the Side Mugen 5 in particular, then there are some quality concessions being made, uh, but I think those concessions would uh, would be made in the pursuit of the style of this cooler. The Mugen 5 looks one way, this looks a little bit different, so maybe you prefer this style over the other one, you might make the concessions for the limited fan speed and all that kind of stuff. Uh, limited lower fan speed. Um, over say the, the you know the, the look of the cooler so there's an extra extended conclusion uh didn't make a lot of sense i can imagine most people have tuned out so thanks so much for checking this one out um if you want to support me then please subscribe to the channel like the video those are the best things you can do if you want to go on above and beyond and you're like hey i I'd, I'd like to see more of this more often then um throw a dollar to me on patreon uh and that will yeah uh, hopefully build up uh, the sort of financial support and the more I get for that the more I can do this so uh, yeah I'd really appreciate that if you can uh, if you can't don't worry um, and yeah so hope you liked it uh, and yeah this this really was a very quick turnaround um, I haven't actually got anything to review lined up so the next one might not be out for a few weeks so suggestions in the comments thanks patrons and I will catch you in the next one bye bye